Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Unity Church of the Hills. We are thrilled to have you here with us this morning. We invite you to take a moment to check in on Facebook and follow us on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram as we begin this morning's announcements. If you are here for the first time, welcome. We are so happy to have you. If you did not receive a welcome packet on your way in, please raise your hand so an usher can bring one to you. Anybody? Good job, ushers. Y'all did it so well. Please fill in the card and stop by the Welcome Center in the foyer. Ask questions, connect with us. Most of all, we want to welcome you and thank you for joining us today. How much good are you willing to experience in 2020? <laughs> Me too. What challenges, obstacles, or setbacks from 2019 are you ready to overcome? Me too. Join Mendy Odlin, author of What If It All Goes Right, and our special guest speaker today. There she is. Yay. Hi, Mendy. <clears throat> Mendy will be hosting a workshop today at 2 p.m. using a collaborative, fun process. Mendy will help us think bigger, discern deeply, and step into 2020 with purpose, power, and a plan. Sounds good to me. On the morning of December 31st, we begin early with the World Healing Day Meditation at 6 a.m. in the chapel. Come pray for people around the world in a space of sacred meditation. Later on the 31st, we celebrate one of our most popular services of the year, our burning bowl service at 5.30 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. Release old thoughts to start anew as we enter the new year. Imagine... Imagine this platform filled with dogs, performing tricks, acrobats, jugglers, and more. Yes, it's happening this Thursday, January 2nd at 6 p.m. The Popovich Comedy Pet Theater will be performing, and there is a special pricing for UCOH congregants. Learn more and register in our foyer today or online at unityhills.org. It'll definitely be a sweet, sweet day. On Saturday, January 4th, join Shannon Pressure for a self-renewal workshop. Reflectively pause and discern your clear intentions for the new year as you wipe the slate clean and begin your journey towards self-love, self-compassion, and self-renewal. Space is limited, so please register in advance. The next segment of The Way of A Course in Miracles, taught by Jennifer Fireisel, right up here. Yay! <clears throat> this next segment is called Going Deeper and will be presented on Thursday evenings and Friday mornings beginning January 9th and 10th. This 20-week series fosters a deep appreciation and commitment to the course. Thanks, Jennifer. If fostering meaningful relationships is one of your intentions for 2020, please consider becoming a spirit Spirit Circle Facilitator. Our facilitators are dedicated to creating space for connection, self-heart-centered conversation, and spiritual transformation. I will get this one out, I promise. Our first series in 2020 will focus on Ellen Devonport's book, Hell in the Hallway, Light at the Door, and facilitators are provided with all of the materials and training to succeed. Training takes place on January 12th, and we ask that you RSVP in advance. Heather Ashamara will be here for a book lecture and signing for her new book, The Warrior Heart Practice, on Sunday, January 12th at 2 p.m. Your ticket includes a copy of her book, hors d'oeuvres, and entrance to the live event, where Heather Ash will share teachings and stories from the book. Also in January, Kathy Schwenke, will, will, who spoke here last week, will be offering a four-week class starting on January 15th on Connecting with Your Angels. The course includes practical step-by-step -step exercises to break down your doubts and open up your perception skills to directly interact with your angelic friends. You can register online at unityhills.org. With that, we will move into a more sacred time in our service. Please silence your phones as we begin our worship service.
It doesn't take every minute. It can be just two or three. And I feel that same sweet spirit that I felt oft times before. Surely I can say that I've been. Good morning. That's much. Good morning. Yeah, thank you. I know that God was very clear in his, her, its mind when it said, let there be life. Because when God said that, each of us entered entered into this life at our appointed and anointed time. And, and I know I'm right about that. <laughs> and what I also know is that God was giving us a clue about how to live our lives, being clear in our thinking and how we feel so that we live the unity's third principle that says that what we think and how we feel about what we think creates the reality that we see. And I know that I am a man of the Bible, and I lean on the Word of God often. And there are three things that I like to look to when I know that my thinking or feeling has gone sideways. That first passage that I love to look at is Romans 12 and 2, which says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The next passage that I love to review is Philippians 4 and 8, which says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And the last thing that I always like to remind myself is this, Romans 10 and 17, which says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I'm not just talking about the Bible, but the truth that we speak through the words of our mouth that we know is true about ourselves because we know that in God, we live and we move and we have our being. God knows the multiplicity of your thoughts and feelings. When I surrender my thoughts and feelings and desires to God, only good results. So I have to be clear in my thinking because I know that we serve a benevolent God, a benevolent universe that is constantly responding to what we think and how we feel. So as Mindy Odlin first taught me when I met her, it's like, get your mind right. <laughs> right? So as we take this into prayer, thank you. <laughs> Let's take a deep breath. Living, loving, Mother, Father, God, how grateful and thankful that you said, let there be life. We're grateful and thankful that when you said that, we entered into this life at our appointed and anointed time. And in so doing, we remember that in you, we live 
and we move and we have our being, that there is no right or wrong about us because we are here. You ordained it to be so, and because we know it's true, we also know that we possess all of your amazing qualities. We are love. We are light. We are peace. We are wisdom. We are strength. We are courage. And we are the truth. And in knowing that, we recognize and realize that we are miracles and blessings fashioned after you. And as we share of our miracles and blessings, we receive of those same miracles and blessings, recognizing that through you, the giver and the receiver are one and the same. So thank you, God, that you've blessed us with these amazing lives that we get to live. Thank you, God, that you are that kind of God that knows my life before I ever entered into it. Thank you that you ordained your holy and perfect will through me, that I may be your omni-active hands sharing in your holy will. Thank you for these who've come today to listen to what Mindy has to share with us today. Thank you for everyone that had a hand in this service. Thank you for Reverend Steve for being here today. Thank you for everyone that showed up and showed out for you. For this and so much more, we're grateful. And so it is because we allow it to be so. And so say we all. Amen. Yes, yes. And the sing along the congregation. Thank you, Celebration. Thank you, John. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Unity Church of Hills again. Now, each morning we like to cover one of our values, principles, mission, vision, such as that. And this morning we are focused on our vision. So let's speak our vision together. We are an ever-expanding community of love and acceptance where lives are transformed. And in case you missed the announcement about our new app last week, here it is again. We love it that much.
wanted to also let you know that the director of finance position is still available. And if you're interested in that or so, know someone who might be a fit for that job, you can go by the office to get a job description or go online at unityhills.org. We have a couple of very shiny, bright, special guests with us this morning. <laughs> so we want to welcome first our... Uh, our Minister Emeriti, he's like, T uh, Tammy and I have been calling him like the Fred Rogers of Unity, don't you think? <laughs> Reverend Steve Bullen. <laughs> and we also have another shiny, beautiful guest, Mindy Odlin. And... Uh, <laughs> She's no stranger to Unity Church of the Hills, as you may have uh, suspected. And Mindy is the author of What If It All Goes Right? Creating a New World of Peace, Prosperity, and Possibility. For over 20 years, she has spoken to audiences around the world about the power of positive thinking, innovative problem solving, and spiritual leadership, some of which we are excited to hear about today. Mindy is the founder of the What If Up Club, supporting purpose-driven people to lead the change they want to see in their lives and in the world. She currently lives in the mountains outside of Denver, Colorado, where she enjoys basking in the beauty of nature, skunking her husband at gin rummy, <laughs> and shamelessly spoiling her two rescue mutts with her preteen daughter, Mindy Welcome. And while these are bright and shiny guests here today, there is no one more important to us than the guests that we have joining us for the first time. So if you're here for the first time and you're willing to do so, if you would stand, we would be very happy and excited to give you a special blessing. Anybody new with us this morning? You can stay standing if you would. Uh, if you're, uh, the blessing works just as well if you're seated as well. So church, if you'll repeat after me, welcome. welcome. We're grateful you're here. We're grateful you're here. Thank, you Thank you for choosing us today. Wherever you are, on your spiritual journey, we meet you there. Welcome to Unity Church of the Hills. Now, each week we join together in speaking powerful statements of truth called affirmations. So if you will join with me as we speak these together. My perfect vision unfolds with grace and ease in 2020. I allow spirit to guide my course of action towards my 2020 vision. My journey in 2020 is clear and concise. All the tools I need to navigate change are readily available to me. I am the captain of my life's journey, and so it is, and so I let it be. Amen. And now at this point in our service, we invite you to settle in as Laura Zilke leads us in meditation. As we prepare for meditation, I invite you to remove anything that may be in your lap, placing your feet firmly on the ground and gently closing your eyes. Allow your focus to settle into this right now moment. Let's take a few breaths together, breathing in and breathing out. As you move into your breath, focus your attention there. And as you breathe in, whisper to yourself, I allow. And as you breathe out, you can quietly whisper to yourself, I release and let go. I allow. I release and let go. This rhythm of your breath is the current of your life. It is the heartbeat of your very existence. 
and yet you aren't in control of your heartbeat. For there's an infinite wisdom beating your heart and breathing you in every moment. And every moment is an invitation to breathe in and allow, allow more good, allow more love, allow more possibility. And every moment as you breathe out, you are invited to let go and release, release the fear. Release the doubt. Release the uncertainty. Through your breath, you have access to the infinite well of love. This love that you are. I'll give you a moment to breathe into this love. I allow, I release and let go. Just like the caterpillar knows the exact perfect time to enter into its metamorphosis and when to break the shell to transform into a beautiful butterfly, you also inherently know when to let go when to allow grace to open your wings, and when to fly free. Just like that butterfly, you are the miracle, dear one, a walking, breathing miracle. And in claiming your truth, you are set free. You are free. You are free. As you come back into your breath in this moment, when you're ready, you may open your beautiful eyes and return to the room. Mm-hmm. 
Wow. 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 There's a whole lot of wow going on, isn't there? Wow. This is a special place. This is a very special place. Unity Church of the Hills has been a very special place in my heart, in my life, for a very long time. It is such an honor to be here with Reverend Steve. Um, you've been such a mentor and a friend. There's another very special person that is here with us this morning that I want to take a moment to acknowledge. Pam, would you stand? Pam Bronig right here. Pam was the one who introduced me to Unity. 25 years ago, I was working, we were colleagues, and she invited me to go visit this thing called a Unity Church. And I'm like, what's that? <laughs> church, yeah, whatever. <laughs> So she invited me again, and then I blew her off, and then she invited me again, and now here I am. So thank you, Pam. It was 2004 when I first began as spiritual leader of Unity of Wimberley. I was the founding, pioneering spiritual leader there. And to begin a new Unity Church, you have to have a sponsoring church. Unity Church of the Hills was our sponsoring church. So I thank you. Everyone in Wimberley says thank you for doing that for us. So I took a lot of classes. I spent a lot of time here. But I remember 2004, I remember the very first Sunday out at Unity of Wimberley, the first time that I gave a sermon as their spiritual leader. Now, I had been a motivational speaker on the college market. So I was a professional speaker for a long time. I knew how to grow up business, and I was not afraid of speaking in public. But on that morning, on my first Sunday as spiritual leader, when I arrived that morning, there was a little gift for me. And when I opened up that special little gift, inside, there was a name tag. And it said, Mindy Audlin, spiritual leader. And so I put on that name tag that first Sunday morning, and I freaked out. <laughs> I freaked out. It's like I put that name tag on, and suddenly every limiting voice in my head decided to chime in and say, yeah, right. Like, what does that even mean? Like, who are you to put on this name tag saying spiritual leader? You know, yeah, whatever. Like, what do you know about being a spiritual leader? You don't have the kind of credentials. You don't have that kind of experience. Who are you to step into that? And so I had this panic attack, this anxiety attack. Now, seriously, I was sitting on the stage up here in my chair. I was watching everybody come in, my warm smile on my face, welcoming everyone. In my head, I thought I was going to pass out. I was like hyperventilating. I was having a panic attack. I really, I honestly didn't think I was going to make it up to the podium. I literally, I asked my husband, I said, hey, there was a, an extra stool over by the music team. I said, can you put that next to the lectern? Because I didn't think I had the strength to actually stand and give the talk. And at that moment, sitting in that chair, smiling, my warm, my warm smile with my ashen face, I had a chat with God. It's like, okay, God, we need to talk here. <laughs> because here's the deal. I wrote a talk, and I've practiced it, and I know it. So I'm like, if I get up there and I pass out, as long as I can still speak, I'm giving this talk. This thing is going to happen. It's going to happen. And so as you know, the daily word was being read, and the chaplains came up, and the music team, and all these things are happening, and my heart is pounding and then the moment comes when it's my time to get up off my chair to come give my talk, and something happened. Something happened between that chair and that lectern, and I felt suddenly this wave of strength, this wave of clarity, this wave of knowing. And the shift, I believe, is I got out of my head, out of my worry, and I felt the love of this community. I felt the love of spiritual community and I felt my purpose, like this is what I'm here to do. And when I step into the things I'm here to do, somehow it always works out. Have you noticed that? When you follow your call, if you can set those voices aside, somehow, I don't know how, I kind of have a hint, but I think I know how, it always works out. So the question is, we got a new year coming. What's the name tag you're gonna put on? What's it going to say? What are you going to claim? Does it sound a little scary? 
We have our last Sunday here of 2019. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. It's, it's, it's been, uh, hopefully you've had some wonderful memories, some wonderful experiences, some wonderful growth in 2019. And maybe you have some things that you would like to change. Perhaps. Maybe there's some things in your community or in the world that you would like to see change. Raise your hand if you have some changes you'd like to make in 2020. Yes, turn to the person next to you and say, let's make some changes. Let's make some changes. All right. Ah, feels good. Okay, so how do we do that? How do we do that? We want to make some changes. How do we do that? How do we break free of the limitations of the past and step into what we're feeling called for. It's 2020. It's a big year, right? It just, you can feel it. This is a transformational year. So how do we step into that? Well, how many of you um, take this time of year every year and you write down your resolutions? Oh, wow. <laughs> Intentions? Uh, it's like, oh, yeah, 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 that's different. <laughs> We're so spiritual. We do, we do intentions. <laughs> Whether it's a resolution or a goal or an intention or whatever it is that maybe you write down, the research shows us only 60% of people do that. 60% of us this time of year, every year, we sit down, we write down, here's what I want to see for the new year. And of that 60%, any guesses on what percent actually follow through? <laughs> 8%, it's better than you thought, right? <laughs> it's like it just feels like to. I look at my ear like, hmm. So 8% of us actually follow through on those goals and resolutions. So clearly, um, there's something missing in the whole process. So what is that missing piece? So here's an activity to uh, get us a framework for today. So take your finger out in front of you like this. Put it down as low as you can. And... Draw a circle in a counterclockwise way. Do a counterclockwise circle in front of you. And still moving your finger counterclockwise, move it up higher and higher and higher and higher till it's above your head. And then you may notice that it actually isn't counterclockwise anymore. Now it's clockwise. How did that happen? So all week long, you're going to be doing this, right? How did that happen? Counterclockwise, clockwise. So that's the power of a shift in perspective. A shift in perspective creates a shift in reality. Yes? Wayne Dyer says, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. That's right. So how do we shift our perspective so that we can lean into the year that we want. So this morning, I have three things for you. I have a gift, I have an idea, and I have a tool. So when you came in this morning, hopefully um, you picked up one of these. If you don't, you can share with someone next to you. This is called a Chinese finger trap. Yes, so you're welcome. I hope you like your gift. Just what you wanted, right? A Chinese finger tra trap. The way it works is you put your fingers in like this, and then you just try to get out. Uh, and then you get stuck, and it's funny. And that's it. So that's a Chinese finger trap. Hang on to this. This is your gift. And I give it to you. I know now you're stuck like, I don't know how to get out of this thing. <laughs> that's OK. You don't need to do anything for the next hour or so, right? Just be stuck. It's OK. <laughs> so this is a gift for you. And I invite you to take it with you this week as you reflect on the year and as you set some intentions for 2020. We'll talk about this in just a minute. So that's the first gift. That's the gift. Now the second thing I want to share with you is an idea. This is a shift perhaps in perspective. So this is the time of year when lots of us read the books and go to the workshops and take the classes and listen to the podcasts on how to create the life that we love, right? How do you create the life you love? And then from that, we set our resolutions, we set our, our strategic plans, and all those different things. So this is the paradigm shift. This is not your typical uh, pre-New Year's advice. So there is an inherent flaw in that idea of seeking to create a life we love. And that's why I believe it doesn't work. It's not congruent with spiritual principle. In unity, we teach that we create through our thoughts, right? So if we are setting an intention to create a life we love, it presupposes that we don't love the life we have, 
right? It has to start looking out there and we sit down and we think, hmm, what do I need to create in my year so that I can be happier? What do I need to have? You know, what does my scale need to say? What does my bank account need to say? What does my job need to look like so that I can be happier, so that I can have a life I love? And when we do that, we create a gap between where we are and where we want to be. And it puts that life we love in our future forever in our future. That's not what Jesus modeled, right? He didn't, at the beginning of the year, say, every year, sit down. He didn't say, I intend to be the greatest spiritual leader of all time. He didn't set that. He didn't, he didn't model that for us. He didn't say, dear heavenly father, please help me achieve my quarterly goals. You know, he wasn't being strategic like that. What he decided to do, what he demonstrated for us, the way that he demonstrated for us with something different. So what if instead of this year setting out to create a life you love, what if instead we chose to create a life of love? Instead of creating a life we love and setting that intention, what if we set the intention? My intention for 2020 is to create a life of love, where the love that I am has opportunities to express and to expand and to make a difference in the world. And what if when we do that, we actually, the byproduct is a life that we love because we are present in every moment loving what is. So that is the idea. So turn to the person next to you and say, I am creating a life of love. I am creating a life of love. Yes, imagine how that will affect your resolutions this year, right? Because when we set out to, you know, maybe these are the, these are the top ones. You know, people want to lose weight. People want to make more money. They want better relationships, all these different things. You know, want a bigger home. I want to go, I want to take a trip. You know, those are the things people usually write down for their New Year's goals. But, you know, that kind of thinking is actually a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. So imagine this, and take your little finger trap so you can see, you can have an experience of it. So imagine, here we are, and we are born into this physical reality. So I'm going to go in here. We're going to go into this physical reality. And we move around a little bit, and as you move around a little bit, you might feel a little bit of tension, a little bit of constriction. And what we tend to do, our instinct, when we start feeling a little stressed, a little overwhelmed, is we want to look outside. We want to go outside to find something that will soothe that. We look out there. If only I have this, if only I have that. And what happens, the more we look out there, the tighter it becomes. The more stuck we get, the more frustrating it is. But here's the paradigm shift. So what if instead of trying to go, you know, have all of these things make us happy, what if instead, I invite you here, take your thumbs, put them in the middle, and just feel what it's like to go to the center. So what if instead we go center and we move in? As you move, instead of pulling away and looking outside, what if we look within? Because what happens when we do that is you notice now there's some room to grow. Now there's a place to make choices. There's flexibility. So the key, what if the key of, to creating a life that we love is loving the life that we have and knowing that as we go into this year, setting an intention that every day I'm going to wake up and be aligned and to tap into the love that I am, the love that I have, what I love to do, who I love to do it with, the people I love to serve, and what if that guides us through every day of the year? Can you imagine what we could create as individuals and as a collective by following the impulse of love? So you have a gift, you have an idea, and then finally I want to leave you with a tool because it's real easy to come in here on Sunday morning and say, I'm going to live a life of love. I love everybody here. You're all fabulous. You're all so nice to me. I just love being here. But then Monday morning rolls around, and you start affirming, I'm going to create a life of love. And then you look around, and you see your coworkers, and you see the, the you know, you see that you read the newspaper, and you're like, hmm, well, except for that thing. I'm going to create a life I love except for that thing, except for that thing, because how, how could I love that? How could I love that? So what we're saying is 
We may still see things we want to change, and we will, because that's the desire of our soul, is to evolve and to expand. So we will see things that we want to change. It's not saying we don't want to change our reality. It's saying that we have the ability, through the power of our imagination, to see our reality in a way that grounds us in love. The tool that I use for this, and if you've heard me speak before, you've probably heard me talk about these two little words, this little phrase that is the secret is the key to unlocking your imagination. And those words are, what if? The problem is so many of us use those words, that phrase, that gift, and we what if in a way that creates fear and anxiety and stress and overwhelm. I call that what if downing. What if it doesn't work? What if I can't? What if it's overwhelming? What if the problem's too big? What if it's too late? That's what if downing. And what that does is it creates resistance and stress and it locks us in so that we feel stuck and we do nothing because there's nothing it feels like we can do. What can I do? The alternative though is to use the same power of your imagination and the same what if and create a new possibility. What if there's never been a better time, there's never been a more important time for us to come together as beings of light and beings of love. You know, what if this is our time, this is our opportunity? What if the entire journey is actually fun and joyful? What if we make new connections? What if it's the best thing we've ever imagined and beyond? What if this is just the beginning? And when we what if up, we shift our perspective, right? So when we're what if downing, what if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't work? Well, what if I can? What if it's possible? What if this is our time? We shift our perspective, we shift our reality. We shift our perspective collectively, we shift reality collectively. That's the possibility that we have as spiritual community. So you have a gift, you have an idea, you have a tool. If you wanna go deeper with that tool, I invite you to join me this afternoon for the workshop because I'm gonna give you an experience of using that tool. You can use it on your own. If you use it in a small group, and I know you've got your circles going on, your spirit circles, when you use this process with a group, it magnifies the impact. Where two or more are gathered, mm, the potential is enormous. We're not meant to do this alone. We are a community, and we were born to remember our unity. So that's the possibility. I also have another gift. I brought a bonus gift. And when you came in, hopefully you got one of these little postcards. I just created an on, a five-day online challenge. It's called the Five Day Perfect Vision Challenge. And it gives you five days of ideas and tools and exercises to help you prepare the way for 2020. So if you want to take this idea and a few more and use it to get yourself grounded in your heart and centered in your heart as you create your vision, your perfect vision for the new year, then all you do is just put your name and email on it, leave it in my basket at the front, and uh, I'll send you an email to get you up and going. Because they only gave me 20 minutes and I really needed five days. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I hope you will join me in, in that challenge. You know, it was 13 years ago that I had my final Sunday at Unity of Wimberley as their spiritual leader. And in those three years, they were incredibly transformational years. You know, when you step into an idea of who you are, and even though it doesn't quite feel real, you do it anyway until it sort of starts to sink in. On that last Sunday after I gave that last sermon, I remember taking off that name tag and leaving it at the altar with a blessing because it had done what it had meant to do. I still have those voices, I don't know about you, I still have those voices that pop up that say, wow, how'd you get here? You know, what are you doing? I, had a, I have a friend of mine at uh, Unity Village Chapel, her name is Aaron, Reverend Erin McCabe, who many of you may know, she's an amazing light. And we were driving to lunch one day, I had this, you know, this amazing circle of friends and mentors we were driving to lunch and I was talking about some of the things that were showing up. I work with ministries all over the world, um, providing leadership training and coaching them on small group communities and how to foster communities. And I was sharing with her, I said, you know, sometimes I wonder, like, why is it me that's doing this? Like, I don't have any credentials. I'm just kind of learning what I learn and sharing it and just kind of doing what I feel called to do in the moment. But I'm like, Surely there's somebody that would be better than me to do this. Why isn't anyone else doing it? Why is this me? And my fabulous, beautiful friend, Erin, gave me a, a bit of wisdom that I have taken with me ever since. And she said, you are here by right of consciousness. 
that we don't have to create that goal is check, 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 check. If we set the intention, not of having all these things and doing all these things, but if we set the intention this year, imagine we set the intention to live a life of love, to lift ourselves in consciousness every single day, to begin every day prayed up and centered and clear and open and listening and tapped into the power of our heart, knowing our gifts, knowing who we serve and how we want to serve them and allowing that to inspire us day after day after day to be the change and to lead the change that we want to see in our lives, in our world. Can you imagine what a year it will be? What a year it will be. And so I wish you a fabulous week of reflection as you think back on 2019 and as you come to the burning bowl ceremony and you burn all those limiting thoughts, those limiting beliefs, and say, sorry, not sorry, I won't miss you, that's okay, you have served me and now I am ready to move on. So I invite you this year, release all that you can release. Release all that has been holding you back. Release those thoughts that may be telling you that you can't and step into a new possibility. What if this is the year that we lean into love? You know, what if this is the year that we step into and fully express the love that we are? So wishing you clarity and vision for 2020 and joy and happiness and love for a lifetime. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mindy. So this is the time of the season where we are reminded of the power of giving and receiving. And I don't know about you, but this past week for Christmas, it was a time of great joy, not just so much in receiving, though we certainly receive a lot here at UCOH, but a time of giving. I would get caught up just watching people un unwrap the presents in the joy of that. So I invite you to go into your heart and gather your gifts so that we may share in that cycle of reciprocity of giving and receiving here at UCOH. There are many ways that you can give. Uh, you can um, gather your card if you give through um, the offering basket. There's a card in the pew rack in front of you that you can gather to bless. You can also give through our text, the new app, or in the kiosk in the foyer. So with that, let's say our offering blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I circulate, and I am grateful.
congregation. I see Eric coming with, the, with our blessings, our many blessings. Yay, Eric. <laughs> oh, join me as we bless all these, all the abundance that we have. We give thanks, sweet spirit, for these offerings, for the givers, and for each one here today sharing in this love, acceptance, and peace. We see these gifts and offerings going out to do great work in the world, and so it is. Amen. Thank you. All right, we have the kiddos ready. We're going to bring them into this little light of mine. <laughs> 